And we're back here, table number one at the 2016 BCA Pool League, Wisconsin State Championships. I'm Gennaro Vasquez, the commentator for this match, as I have been uh, pretty much for most of the live stream matches. The Fargo rating has this one a pretty even match with Shelton Rogers, statistically just a slight edge, a 56 to 44 percent edge over Jorge Martinez. Chula Vista Resort and Water Park here in Wisconsin, Dallas, Wisconsin. A lot of pool being played this weekend. It's only the second day. Um, yesterday we had scotch doubles. Today it's the silver division we're watching at this moment on table one. Shelton coming up, ready to to break, breaking off the side rail here. Let's see if he goes for the second ball break or the head ball. Kind of looks like he's going for that second ball. Indeed he does. And he has a pretty nice break there. Doesn't have a great shot to get started, but uh, he does have couple of pocketable balls he could maybe cut uh, maybe cut the 14 in the side if he wants stripes cut the six ball if he wants solids Alton Rogers at the table here, trying to uh, trying to figure out how to navigate his way around this first rack of this match. He felt pretty good there. That's some nice shape play from Shelton. Gonna play the ten ball here. Ooh, that ball kind of fought a little bit. And uh, in doing so, left him a little bit of a bad angle. He's going to have to shoot this 13 ball first. And he has uh, the window for that 11 ball is not a wide window. He's got maybe a foot, maybe a, almost like a foot and a half window that he's got to shoot this, cut this 13 ball in, then find that window in order to be able to play the 11. I do not believe he got there. Hit that ball pretty thin. He had to hit it pretty thin. Uh, tried to use a lot of English to reverse off of that rail, but just was not able to get enough on it. Shooting at the nine ball. Can't tell if he can hit this ball clean or not. Calls the 11 ball. And he ties up the two on that attempt. So we see our first look at Jorge Martinez. Who statistically comes in with a slight disadvantage according to the Fargo rate system. But there is a lot of pool to be played in this match. Let's see how this works out, Jorge eyeing that three ball, trying to figure out what the best way to attack that tied up two ball is. <laughs> Being temporarily Confused by the Cyclops balls as far as the, the slightly different color. But he's calling the six ball. Tries to run down into the six, I believe, but didn't quite get there. And, well, he has left himself in a bad spot. A 
I'm not even sure if he can uh, cut the ball into the corner, into the outside pocket. We'll find out. Two balls, still in a bad spot here for Jorge Martinez. He decides he's going to go ahead and play a layup, a safety, and uh, see what uh, Shelton does with the table. Ooh, he changes his mind and says, no, I'm going to play the one ball. I think this is really kind of a two-way shot. Uh, in a way, it's a a shot, but also a safety, just in case, because theoretically here he won't leave the stripes very well. So yep, he does go ahead and shoot that two-way shot. He does leave a cut for the nine, but even if Shelton makes this, that uh, 11 ball is not a good spot. I Pretty much the only spot for that 11 ball, I think, would be if he banked it back up to what is our lower right corner. And so Shelton decides to kind of put that nine ball up near the corner pocket and uh, turns Jorge loose back at the table here. Jorge calls the five ball in the corner pocket and without a doubt, he's going forward with this cue ball in an attempt to try to nudge that two ball out. And he does just that. Comes out relatively nicely out of that because he's got the four ball now. He can play the four, can take the one to the corner pocket. Sets up for the two, then the eight. At least that's the way it's drawn up on paper. <laughs> Let's see the way it really plays out here on the table number one. Oh, I caught just a little bit of that cushion uh, right away, and that put just enough induced English on there to uh, kind of throw that ball out so that gives Shelton an opportunity I think he's looking at some kind of safety here since he can't directly hit a ball well, he plays a very nice safety leaving Jorge Pretty much uh, shot at the four ball. Let's see how this plays out here. Oh, that actually ended up really well. He's got the one ball in the corner now. Draw back just a tad for the two ball in the side. It's a race to six. Fargo rate has these players close enough that uh, neither gets a spot. Statistically, Shelton Rogers has a rating, which is going to allow him to uh, have a slight advantage to start out as uh, the presumed favorite. But uh, as of this moment, it is Jorge Martinez that is all set to try to take this first game of the match. Call the ball to the corner. And he does successfully pocket that ball, holds the cue ball for nice sh uh, shape on the uh, eight ball. So it looks like Jorge Martinez is going to tip the odds in his favor here by winning game number one. And he does. While we're in Wisconsin Dells, this is the BCA Pool League National State Championships. 
the silver division of this tournament. Jorge Martinez finishing off that first game. He also has the break going into the second game. We're at Chula Vista Resort and Water Park. I'm Gennaro Vasquez providing commentary for uh, this live stream. So really nice to have you along. Thanks for tuning in. A lot of great pool being played here in Wisconsin. Wisconsin Dells uh, Resort Town. A little bit early in the season uh, for it to be in full swing. Usually things kind of get started around here. I think around Memorial Day. But uh, they've kind of become the Midwest haven for water water park activity here in Wisconsin Dells. Uh, so much so that Chula Vista Resort has two water parks, at least two water parks, uh, indoors and an outdoor water park. With the outdoor water park being visible for quite a distance. And we have... Uh, Jorge Martinez breaking from the middle, going after the head ball. Does pocket a ball. Cue ball kind of uh, flirts with that corner pocket, but manages to stay out. Kind of surveying the table here. I think stripes really look best. Um, no two balls are touching. Solids are runnable, too. The problem with stripes is that there's not really good starter shots, so he just that alone may end up uh, tipping it in the favor of solids for Mr. Uh, Martinez. Play the one ball to the uh, corner. That would be the left top corner on our table from our perspective. Pockets that with authority. Sends the cue ball back up table. And uh, I'll tell you, I think he fell really well. That was a really nice shape play. He can shoot this three ball. A little tough to tell whether the five ball goes by the 10, but uh, we'll find out here potentially as he uh, shoots. Four. 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 Calling the four ball. I don't think he meant to uh, draw that back quite as far as it came. Still has a chance here, but now he's got to turn the cue ball loose a little bit. It's it with, oh, that was a really nice speed because what he does is he he pumped that seven ball, but he didn't want to pocket it. Just kind of lays it up in that corner pocket. Still has to play fairly precise position here. The two balls in kind of an awkward spot by the side pocket. It's on the rail there. And the five ball, also pocketable, but it also is sitting in, Kind of an odd spot. He lines himself up for the five pretty nicely. Let's see what he's going to do here as far as uh, taking a close look at this thing. Looks pretty tight from here. Maybe half pocket shot. Um, he's going to have to go forward for that two ball. Not going to be able to do much with it. Well, it's tough to say whether the ball actually passed, could pass or not. Um, obviously catches a piece of the 10 ball as he's going by. So that gives Shelton his first opportunity here this game. Shelton decides that safety is the prudent route to go. So he 
and Jorge says, I'm going to try the five in the opposite corner. So here we go. Well, there wasn't really a great shot for Jorge. So he elects to just sort of uh, knock his balls out, give Shelton a chance at the table. I think Shelton's going to try real hard to uh, try to clean these balls that are above the eight ball here out of the way before proceeding down the table. Not happy. He really wanted that 10 ball next, but uh, he's going to have to uh, come back for that one. The 10 ball does not go in that corner by the 5, so he would really love to be able to shoot that ball now, but uh, not in the cards. All right, so now the 11 ball, um, he has an opportunity to pocket this 11. He has to be a little careful how he does it because he doesn't want to do something that's going to tie up that 10 ball even more so than it already is. And that angle from the 11 over there to the 10 is a little tricky. Trying to decide whether he wants to try to shoot for the shape on the 10 now or whether he wants to uh, try to get a little bit better angle, try to improve things for himself. Goes ahead and hits that 15 and leaves himself uh, cut to the corner. He can go forward with the cue ball in this and maybe get over there for shape on that 10. Yeah, he definitely tried to stroke it. Oh, wow, he leaves. Didn't shoot that as well as I think he would have liked, but he ends up leaving Jorge a pretty tough shot. A tough spot here. If, uh, apparently he can see that two ball in the corner. He's going to really have to stroke this shot because... That fireball sitting in a bad spot. He's going to have to load up on this ball and kind of force it in the corner, get that cue ball to come back down the table. And I have to try to play it a little bit toward what is our right side of that pocket because that. Poke pocket is not going to be kind if he doesn't. Wow, he nailed that one. Wow, was that a good shot. Still don't think he can make the five clean. He's going to have to go real first, but uh, pretty makeable shot for him. The uh, good news out of that situation is that uh, he can pocket that five ball and not have to really do anything extraordinary for shape on the eight. He can just play it nice, pocket speed. Oh, he hits it a little thin. Kind of gives a little giggle. Just uh, shaved that five ball. A pocket almost uh, gave Shelton fits, but uh, the ball does go. Shelton's got to kind of come with a shot here. His cue ball position did not end up. And he does. Wow, that was a nice shot, too. Really couldn't have uh, played that much better. Leave himself a very clear shot. 
over the side pocket and he finishes it off. So evens up the match one to one where table won the silver division of the BCAPL Wisconsin State Championships. Ready for Shelton to break the third game of this match. Very even as far as ratings go. Shelton Rogers with a 56% uh, favorite to win this match according to Fargo rate over Jorge Martinez. Drops a couple of balls. For the most part, the balls, <laughs> they went all over the place, but somehow they all ended up sort of along the rails. Solids are probably, boy, it's hard to really say they're the favorites here. I guess they probably would be only simply because they're the most non-clustered balls. But the two balls not in a good spot necessarily. The five ball is covered by the 12 ball. Hard to say exactly what he's going to elect to do. There's a shot. It's a tough shot, but there is a shot that he could open up all those stripes right now. He could cut that ball down in the corner, but he's going to elect to go ahead and shoot the three, maybe try to get the, some of that clutter out of there. Well, he's not going to want to wait a long time to get that uh, two ball dealt with or the five ball. He'll probably get down for the five ball right now. He does. Well, um, he's set himself up fairly nicely for the five ball. Big question mark right now is that two ball. And even as it sits, that six is not, uh, he's got to play decent shape on that six. Oh, that was a good shot. Just uh, decides to shoot it in the side, put a little cut action on there so he can go and nudge out that eight ball so the six is clear. I think he's going to have to bank that too. Has a little bit more room to cut it then. Oh, he tried it. Uh, he did go ahead and end up banking that cross corner. <laughs> and I think uh, if it was not one of these diamond pro cut pockets, that one had a chance to go. But uh, Jorge says 15 in the side and. Away he goes. Well, there are really not any balls in the way here, so it's more a matter of a defined and uh, calculated runout that is executed by Jorge. That's going to be a matter of whether he takes the lead 2-1 to one in this match. Probably going to have to play the 10 ball here. Oh, he's going to try to play it past that uh, 12 ball down there. It's, a, it's kind of a tight shot. He may elect to, to pass up on that one after all. <laughs> he says, and I'm going to call the 10 ball down in the corner instead. The 14 to the other corner probably would have been a good shot except for the fact that it is a tough shot. And he overcuts it a little bit. Well, Shelton has a 
quarter ball cut on the uh, two ball here. Cue ball is going to go back down where that 12 ball is. Let's see what happens here. Uh, he really, wow, he hit that ball so thin. He hit it too thin. As you can hear him say, Oof, overcut. <laughs> 10 ball coming up next for Jorge. And probably elect to play this nine ball here. Go end to end to end, uh, just simply because it's the way that he can play the most wide area of shape without uh, getting himself in trouble. Gonna just eke off the two ball, and uh, ball goes in the hole. So the twelve ball is coming up here. Probably going to come out three rails. One, two, and he did come out three rails. <laughs> Very disappointed with the outcome of that shot. Um, it's one of those situations where he did have to come out a couple of rails. He had to kind of load it up with English a little bit. And I think that was on his mind maybe a little bit more than just pocketing a ball. So Shelton shoots in the eight ball and takes a two to one advantage. Well, Jorge definitely is going to feel like he maybe had a chance at that one he didn't take advantage of. But it's a race to six, so we are only two to one here. Jorge down a game, but he comes up to break. The silver division of the 2016 BCA Pool League State Championship here in Wisconsin at the Chula Vista resort and water park I'm Gennaro Vasquez this is the second day of play here at the Chula Vista yesterday was scotch doubles day today it's singles Jorge sticking with that center break. He hits that uh, front ball. And last man standing finds the hole. So he uh, does pocket a ball here. Solid's probably looking a little bit better than stripes, although uh, either has a equal opportunity for run out I think here the five ball laying nice uh, for a nice little shot on to break out that two baller to uh, nudge the 13 out of there so that two ball can can go or he thin cutting that ball so he comes around a couple of rails see if he elects to shoot that five ball now it's a little straight I would think. So he's going to go ahead and shoot this one ball. But he's not going to want to wait too long to try to break that out. So he might just draw this back a couple inches. And he came back a little bit further than he was wanting, I think. So I'm going to play this four ball first. So he's going to shave the six ball on the side and uh, should go over, contact the nine, maybe the ten even, but leave him fairly nice for the, the five ball, you would think. Sure does. That is near perfect shape. He can shoot the five ball with a little bit of top here. He's going to have to play it toward the pro side of that corner pocket a little bit toward the uh, left side of that pocket. Hmm. decides to uh, try to knock out the 13 instead of roll forward and kick that two ball forward a little bit. This was the danger in doing so simply because uh, he 
contacts that uh, Balm kicks it out, but at the same time he finds himself right up on that two ball and not an angle that uh, would really be desired. Maybe trying to play it uh, cross corner here. Maybe he'll try to find a way to kick it in. Yep, looks like he's going to try to kick it in. He's going to have to use some pretty fancy English here, I think, to uh, to try to do this. I don't think I don't think he can get it straight back. Well, yes, he could, but uh, didn't quite work out that way. So Shelton Rogers, already leading two to one, comes up to the table. He's pretty much already a 69% favorite statistically to win this match. Jorge Martinez, 31% chance to win the match. But uh, Shelton Rogers can take a nice lead here if uh, he can find a way to run out these balls. Nothing significantly tied up or in his way. He's going to want to probably take care of that 15 ball. Yep, that's what he's going to do here. He's going to most likely play the 15 ball. Um, looks like he's got a little bit of a downward angle to, toward that top rail, so he'll come out. Well played there. He's going to play the 13 ball, then he'll probably want to clean up that 15 ball, maybe the 12 next. Know, he's just pretty much playing stop, 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 shape around here, stunning the ball around the table. Got a little bit of a funny angle on the 12. But he brings it home. Perfect shot here to uh, be able to go up by a score of 3-1 to one in this match. And he does just that. So nicely played by Shelton Rogers. He went through those balls like a hot knife through butter, pretty much. He was a uh, stop, stop, stop shape around the table. But uh, Jorge Martinez had the first opportunity to take that game home. Uh, he uh, didn't quite get the shape on that two ball that he was originally hoping for, I think. And uh, so he paid the price for it. Shelton Rogers goes up 3-1. to one. For table one here, the Chula Vista Resort and Water Park. I'm Gennaro Vasquez doing the commentating for this match. This is the men's silver division. And uh, Shelton Rogers getting ready to break here. The equipment provided by Bad Boys. And uh, they... Always have done such a nice job with the equipment here. The players are loving it. It's uh, these diamond tables with the Pro Cup pockets, the tournament blue felt. And uh, you could definitely hear his uh, unhappiness. He tore into that rack. And uh, that cue ball, that cue ball went flying. So here we go with uh, regards to Jorge coming up to the table. He gets ball in hand to start out. Um, pretty much the only thing I think that's preventing him from already kind of slicing through this rack is the fact that uh, that eight ball is not in the best spot but it's an open table um i'd be real surprised he's, i'm kind of a little surprised he's not choosing to play the 10 ball here and 
think he's choosing solids. There are, are fewer solids on the table. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I like the way that eight ball is sitting. I think with this open table, I would probably personally prefer to uh, go ahead and elect to take stripes and get that temple out of there. But we'll see the way he's going to play it out here. reason I think why he chose solids is because it's pretty much a stop, stop, stop out. He has the five ball here, takes the two ball, then the seven. The, he's got to play very careful shape on the eight, though. That's, that is the key ball in this situation, clearly. Always the key ball, but uh, definitely here, that is the treble ball. think that if he pockets the seven, he can go to the top rail and he can leave himself on the high side of the eight ball and then he'll kind of back cut the eight into the pocket. Must be what he's been looking at from the very beginning. Go ahead and oh, yep. Leaves himself. Uh, I think he's going to have to shoot a mass a shot here, or uh, maybe a kick shot. Boy, it, that eight ball looked to me like trouble from the very get go, and he was within about half an inch there of pulling out that nice run. But now he's sitting in a position where. Shelton Rogers at least is feeling fairly good about a chance back at the table. Well, he hits it, gets a good hit on it, but the balls are open. So it's a matter of, at this point, Shelton, not only are the balls open, but they're pretty much all sitting within a couple of feet of a pocket within a foot or two of a pocket so that first shot was a big one um, because that 10 ball was a little bit of a weird angle toward that side but he shoots it in there leaves himself nice with his 13 he pretty much uh, cleanup duty here for him taking a look at the table I think I would want to get that 12 ball out of there um, that's kind of what he's looking at now. Just deal with that 12 ball, get it out of the situation. Ooh, wow, that broke up pocket. He <laughs> battled that uh, shot the entire way, but he did manage to find its way home there. And he hits that one. Uh, I think he hit that one a little harder than he meant to, but still ends up with very playable shape on the 15. It's a long shot. Leaves himself kind of straight on the 9, so he uh, see if he decides to just kind of draw it back here. And Oh, he does, but... Wow, that pro cut pocket again. He got just enough of that cushion to rattle the ball. And uh, Jorge, probably very happy, but also a little surprised to get back to the table. And there you have it, that <laughs> cue ball giving a little bit of an awkward turn toward the side, but uh, it catches the rail, so we're all good there. It's 2-2 two to two now in this uh, race to six, men's silver division, and the original odds uh, with just 
a slight favor. Fargo rating just slightly favoring Shelton Rogers in this match. Chula Vista Resort and Water Park here, Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. It's the second day of action. We had the Scotch Doubles yesterday. Right now, this is the Silver Division of the Singles. Play's been going on since 10 a.m. this morning. The players uh, really seeming to, uh, some of them, uh, with the uh, tight pockets and the fast tables from time to time. Uh, that's kind of catching them by surprise. Nice break there. Oh, that's a great spread. And uh, cue ball stops in the middle of the table. Solids look like a good choice here. Um, the six ball is in a somewhat of an awkward spot. The seven ball could be used to access it. I do believe the six ball comes down to this corner where he is now. Um, he could get shape on it there, but it's... Uh, it's a little little bit on the tight side of the pocket. Five in the corner. Calls the five ball in the corner. He might even try to bump uh, that ten ball or the uh, nudge the six ball a little bit, try to open it up some. I was playing shape for it. And uh, consequently, in doing so, overcuts the ball just a tad. And uh, Shelton Rogers comes up to the table now. Scores tied two to two here in this race to six. Shelton uh, looking at a table that's relatively open as well. His 10 ball is uh, at the moment sort of his Achilles heel. If he can find a way to get on that 10 ball and pocket that, he's probably sitting in a very good spot. He's going to have to spin this ball a little bit. If he's going to play this for the 10, which I think is what he's thinking, he's going to put some... Uh, Right English, so he comes off the rail and spins around a little bit for the 10. But I think he's sort of contemplating exactly how he wants to play that. From our position, it looks like the 14 goes in the side, um, and he doesn't need to break them out. Uh, he was trying to get that 10 ball out of there, and that cue ball is going toward the side. Oh, wow. Well, with ball in hand now, is Jorge Martinez going to shoot the six ball, the six ball, or the six ball? And that's the options here. to shoot a little awkwardly, but uh, kind of such a layup that you wouldn't think that would present too much of a problem. Almost caught a piece of that 10. I think he wanted to come out for the 1. 
But he does have the three still. I think he would have loved to have uh, got shape on that one ball here. But if he if he does go ahead and make this three ball, uh, he's sitting in very good shape because it's natural shape for the one. There's a scratch in the side here, but he probably knows that and will compensate for that. In fact, I think he may be a little overcompensated for it. He kind of cuts, overcuts that ball just a tad. Well, Shelton comes up now, and he's got uh, some opportunities. The combination looks like it goes maybe to the corner. Um, potentially, if he doesn't like the combination, uh, maybe if he gets right on the 14 ball, he can uh, play that debating whether to shoot the 13 or the 10 first. So I think what he's going to do here is shoot the 10 ball and then uh, try to get an angle to play the 14 in the side. Oh, going to play the combo. But he doesn't come down very far. The combo's kind of leaning the wrong way a little bit. Leaning toward the uh, wrong side of the pocket, but he does pocket it quite easily, leaving only one remaining stripe. That eight ball is kind of covered up, and he's shooting toward the wrong side of the table, so he's got to kind of come with him a little bit here. And uh, once again, Shelton looks a little disappointed with the results of that shot. Jorge cleaning up these last couple of balls. Sets himself up uh, with a nice half ball cut on this eight ball to the corner. And he finishes that off, so really nice job there from Jorge to take advantage of that miss by Shelton. Shelton does not seem happy at all uh, the way that that rack turned out. He did have some opportunities there, couldn't. Uh, take advantage of it. Still kind of see him shaking his head <laughs> as he uh, goes to rack the balls for himself. Should be 3-2 to two, um, Jorge with a slight lead over Shelton here. We're waiting for the system to kind of update. Ball spread pretty well. Gennaro Vasquez in the booth here, round table one. It looks like uh, Ricky Bryant, who is a certified CSI referee, and uh, Ricky, you're uh, known for doing some other things in the pool world as well. <laughs> nice to have you here in Thank the booth you. with us. Thank you. Well, you tried to squeeze that two ball by there. Um, I don't blame him. The two ball wasn't sitting in a good place, but uh, also at the same time, I'm not really sure it was that clean of a shot to, to, to begin with. So, so what have you been up to recently, Ricky? Here or well, just in pool and pool in general. Uh. Well, uh, as you know, I also do some reporting and photography. I was at the Derby City back in January, getting ready for the uh, Super Billiards Expo coming up next month. 
I uh, write and report for Professor Cuball Magazine. And also do some work for other magazines as well. And refereeing a little bit of everywhere. Ricky uh, also being a little bit of uh, holding his comments back, you, you've uh, also received some uh, quite a bit of acclaim for some of your journalism, haven't you? Well, I do pretty well. I uh, have had uh, quite a few covers on a number of the magazines. Uh, I do uh, some coverage for uh, On the Breaks and uh, In Stroke Out West, and I'm a member of the U.S. Billiards Media Association, and we are the organization that, that manages the... Uh, BCA Hall of Fame and the Hall of Fame inductions and do the voting for the Hall of Fames. Well, I would say that is quite a resume here, uh, Mr. Bryant. Congratulations, first of all, on uh, all of your achievements here. Thank you. I uh, had the good fortune earlier today that I it was notified that uh, for the Juniors Atlantic Cup, the sec this will be the second year that I've been selected to be one of the referees for the Atlantic Cup Championship, which will be in uh, Chicago in July. So Jorge playing that three ball, I thought he might have to uh, skim off of that 15 ball, but instead he goes cleanly through there. And I'm not sure that worked out to his advantage <laughs> because the cue ball sort of went a little bit too far. And it looks like he got a shot on the six. Yeah. He might have to spin that ball around there a little bit. I don't think that ball goes cleanly. I don't think it does. From our perspective, it looks pretty good. And we'll, we'll find out soon. Looks different on this screen. I'm kind of staring straight down at the point of contact, and it, I think he's got to curve just a little bit in order to get it around that eight ball. He's looking at it awful hot and heavy, though. It looks like he is going straight at it. Oh, yeah, he definitely could, I guess. We have a perspective that is somewhat above uh, the table, so it sometimes is a little little tricky it's a great view for sure but there are certain angles and certain shots where it's it's uh makes it a little more challenging to kind of see yeah i learned years ago that uh, perspective above the table can can show you the direction you need to go uh, i heard uh, mr siegel tell the story about being in a tournament he couldn't figure out what to do he took his time out and he got in the elevator and went up to the to the mezzanine and looked down on the table and immediately knew what to shoot so captain hook needed some help <laughs> well i'll tell you what jorge is uh trying to make the most of this opportunity he's uh he's played some very nice shape and uh yes. shots to get to this point in time absolutely Especially with all those stripes sitting in the middle of the table. And uh, he's going to kind of have to come with another one here. It's a shot where he's looking away from the pocket. About half a table shot, half ball. You can see the shot. He's going to try it up there by the 11 ball. But it's, uh, it's a, he's left himself a bit of a tester here. Yeah, and potential for the cue ball to come off of that nine and could be dangerous. He's giving this one a good look before he gets down on there. Kind of a pretty significant shot too because this could put him up four to two. Taking a couple of slow practice strokes and a couple of little quick strokes and he shoots it. It's a good one. Wow, that was a good shot. Yeah. That nice was a, speed. That just was true a pocket speed. Really okay. good shot. And so, therefore, that puts him up now. 
in this uh, race to six. Jorge Martinez, table number one, the silver division of the Wisconsin State BC APL Championships. We're at Chula Vista Resort in Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. It's uh, been a long day of play. Uh, lots of uh, great action here on the live stream. We started at 10 a.m. Been going pretty much nonstop here at Table 1 uh, the entire day. It's been busy in the big room. We have a total of 39 tables in play here at the tournament. And... Uh, They've been staying very busy. So uh, Jorge has been electing so far to break from the center, just uh, to just off center. This time, just barely off center, and uh, he's going to be going right for the head ball. It's worked out pretty good for him so far. He. Avoids that scratch in the side, which uh, that ball, that cue ball sure looked like it had eyes for trying to get toward that side pocket as it does sometimes when you break that head ball. But he's sitting very, these balls are, wow, they are wide open, scattered to the four corners of the earth here. One solid and one stripe down. He really could shoot either. Um, Call in the six in the corner. And I agree with you. Both sets looked look doable. And three balls a little tricky, but he might just knock it out right here. Yeah. I was trying to hold it a little bit, I think, <coughs> and uh, in doing so, he kind of undercut it. Mm -hmm. Shelton comes up and uh, <laughs> gets a two for one. And one for his opponent. I think he's trying to figure out how to uh, play this so that he can get nice shape on. He can play the draw. Well, he's sitting pretty nice because now he can kind of roll it forward just an inch or two, play the well. Or you can go <laughs> quite a bit more <laughs> forward and get flat on that ball. So, yeah, I think he's going to take the 14 on the bottom rail, do you think? No. Looks no. like he's playing at 11. Well, he would probably like a little angle to be able to, to shoot this ball and get out for the eight ball. Yep. So probably a matter of a personal preference there. Either way. Most likely would have I probably been just out, fine. It worked out good either way there. Yeah, I think either way he's he's sitting in a in a good spot, which uh, he does. He ends up finishing out that rack. It's four to three. Had an interesting question uh, about the races, which are set due to the Fargo rate. Mm-hmm. And a gentleman came up and asked me in the other room, said, my rate can change during the tournament. I said, your rate can change. And I said, but your, and he said, well, my race changed. And I said, well, your race is dependent on the player that you're playing. It's not set just by your Fargo rate. Right. It's, it's sort of an interesting concept in that it's a relationship um, rating. It's, so when you're playing league, let's say that your leagues has a rating anywhere between um, maybe 3 and 16. Let's say, for instance, and you're like a 9 at that point. Your rating doesn't, you know, your rating can change during league, but like the Fargo rating, your rating can change between opponents. Right. Because it's a, it's a relationship based on, it calculates, now oh, he busted those balls wide open, 
and didn't make anything. You're right, drive right. Um, so it's based on how well your opponent has done against like opponents, how you've done against like opponents, and uh, it's a it's a kind of an interesting concept. Yep. And so it's going to take some people a little bit of getting used to uh, just the first time they're seeing it. And uh, But I think it's going to be great for pool. Well, Ricky, if you wouldn't mind taking over for just a second here, sure I think will. I'm going to have to step away. But... Uh, Ricky Bryant is uh, going to help take us home on this rack. Jorge's shooting and just barely avoids the scratch. He's on the stripes and he's moving through. It's an easy shot on the 13 in position then. Going to take the 14 and come out. Oh my goodness. He came out and scratched in the side. Shelton comes to the table with ball in hand. Has all of his object balls on the table after the dry break. He has his work cut out for him. Takes down the first ball down the rail in nice position. down the next ball but he allowed the cue ball to drift a little bit on him and didn't get the shape on the one that he was expecting so it goes to his backup plan and takes going for the four in the corner and he missed it fired it a little hard trying to hold the cue ball mid table Before he comes back to the table, he's got the 12 hanging and he's got 11 that's just off a rail and a nine ball. That's straight in pretty well, straight in. Should be able to get the shape, go one rail down and back out to get to the 11. Yep. He drops this 11. Should have pretty good shape on the 12 hanging in the pocket. Handles that very well. Leaves himself a long shot, but that's uh, if he can thin this one just to play it softly to hold position for the 8 in the other corner. But he followed it and scratched on top of the 12. Gives Shelton back to the table with ball in hand. Five object balls on the table. The only com the only problem balls he has is the three and the four. And he places ball in hand behind the three to shoot the three in the corner to get rid of the problem ball. Takes that one out. Had a number of options, but as he drops the balls, he's going to be without options eventually. He's going to have to play better shape. And that's what he's contemplating. Take the six in the side and probably roll forward to try and get the four. Nope, he's going to roll down to take the five in the side. Now this is going to be interesting, the position he gets. 
So you gotta try to go up behind the one and play the one. Yes. Leaves himself the long shot on the four, which should be able to have just a small stop on it and be straight in on the eight. Here we go, just a little draw. And Shelton ties it up at 4-4 four, four, in a race to six. And this is the 2016 BCAPO Wisconsin State Championships. And I'm Ricky Bryant. Four fours is the score. Waiting to see what our change in the Fargo rate is. Race to six. So basically we got a 2-2 two -two race now. Both gentlemen are playing pretty well. Our hay is broke and scratched. He dropped one solid on the break, but also scratched in the corner pocket, which will give Shelton ball in hand anywhere on the table. And he's opting to take, or to the attempt to take the solids as he lines up for a six ball in the corner. And takes the six down. Now has is looking at the two ball. But he has multiple options. But he's taking the two. That clears one end of the table. So he's not having to move from one end to the other. Now he moves down table. Bumps a stripe out of the way perfectly. Which opens him up on the four ball. which he should be able to come out of this for shape on one of, one of his other three remaining balls. But he's also looking at the three ball, which is another option to cut down the rail. And that's what he's opting to do, is to go for the three down the rail to the corner. And he executed it, but got a little bit of a kiss off of a stripe to drop the cue ball in the corner pocket. Or hey, back to the table. With ball in hand. and has this full complement of seven balls in his suit on the table. And probably if I'm looking at it, this, he's got three balls around the open. And he's got his 12, his nine, and his 10 that are, and 14 are intermingled. So he's having to pick those off and get them out of the way. Nice shot on the 12 to the corner and now he's gonna try the 10 on the side. And now he's gonna go for the 14 to get that other trouble ball out of there. And if he plays it good, he's 
Going to hold position for the nine. Oh. Well, he's decided to go the other direction because he didn't want to move that one ball. Fifteen cross side. But at some point he's going to have to get position to deal with his nine. So he's going to play the eleven. He's going to try to come down behind the nine, and that'll give him an option for position to either play the side or the corner, depending on how he ends up. Oh, he drew it. Yeah, nice draw. Should have a little easier cut shot for the corner. Floats back out, take the eight back in the same corner. This will put Jorge up and put him on the hill. The match is now standing at 5-4. Mr. Martinez at 5 and Mr. Rogers at 4. We're here at uh, 2016 BCAPO Wisconsin State Championship. This is day two. We had uh, scotch doubles on day one. Singles have started here on day two. And we have three more days of play with team play and more singles action. We're going to be here with you until 10 o'clock tonight with the 10 o'clock matches. Jorge hits it nicely. Dropping one ball on the break. Everything is spread out pretty well. You've got the majority of the balls are down table. Looks like about four balls up table. And... Uh, now for his decision with it being open table. I'm gonna call the ten ball. Same combo. He's calling a combo shot on the ten ball. Ten to the corner. And with the open table situation, he is allowed to play any ball to any ball other than the eight ball on the combination, as long as he's called his ball and his pocket. 13. Now he's established as a stripes, so he must contact a stripe. And he's playing the 13. Played it clean. Fifteen ball. Looks like his only problem ball is the fourteen right now. Looks like he's trying to draw back to get the angle on it. And to go the other direction, take the nine. He 
And now he'll have the 11 in the bottom left hand corner. He has a bad angle to try and get the position he wants is right where he's pointing to to get the angle on the 14. But to get the 11, he's going to have to cut it just a little. His other option would be coming off the rail and holding position. And that's what he did. He floated really nice. He's got a good position on the 14. It's not the easiest shot in the world. He should be. Thin it down the rail. And it puts him on the eight. Well, that was nicely done. So he has a nice shot at that eight ball on the side to uh, potentially win this match. Yeah, and this has been a nice, really nice break and run. That's it. Well, Jorge uh, takes that match. He uh, takes it six to four over Shelton Rogers and the men's silver division of this 2016 BCAPL Wisconsin State Championships. I'm Gennaro Vasquez, joined here by Ricky Bryant. And so.